Fish in Canada, brought to you in part by Stearns, the life jacket experts. Ram trucks, nothing works harder than a Ram. Castrol, more than just oil, it's liquid engineering. U.S. Real, when performance means everything. And Radio World, ask the experts at radioworld.ca. As a kid, my worst memories of roughing it are the late night trips to the outhouse. Having to follow that winding trail with a flickering old landing, you could barely see what might be hiding in the underbrush. Critters like a skunk or an old pole cat could be waiting to scare the bejeebas out of you. <laughs> then you had to hope it would stay lit while you was doing your business. Coleman has a solution for lighting up your own personal space. It's the LED Quad Lantern. It features four removable, rechargeable sections and provides up to 75 hours of light. Now, everyone can see what's on the trail and around the campsite. Visit ColemanCanada.ca for more outdoor solutions. I like the natural the brown. Today's show is based on a previous Fishing Canada episode where a furry little creature stirred quite a buzz. Now, if you're a bass fishing fanatic, like my buddy Pete and I are, or better yet, a top water nut, you're going to be happy to note that the furry little rodent is back in the game. Today we're fishing on the French River and Lake Nipissing. Now, this area of Ontario is known for its huge musky and outstanding walleye fishing. However, the largemouth and smallmouth bass fishing here is some of the best in the province. The French River starts its flow in Lake Nipissing and travels for 110 kilometers, finally emptying into Georgian Bay. Many years ago, it was used by the Algonquin people as a transportation corridor. It was named the French River because it was frequently associated with the French explorers in the 17th century. In 1986, it was designated as a Canadian Heritage River. Going back in time, the Ojibwe first named the river Wemetagosabe. The early French explorers named the river La Riviere de Francais, but it's now known mostly as the French River or simply the French. Chaudier Lodge is located just four and a half hours north of Toronto on an island in Ontario's legendary Upper French River. This five-star resort truly is one of those fantastic near north experiences. It's everything that a wilderness retreat should be. Gorgeous, perfect looking large boat and fat too. Wow, man. Nice. Nice small boat. Okay. All right. That's good. That's awesome. That's good. You're right. Large mouth. Right, large mouth, right where he should have been. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. How's that, buddy? Nice. <laughs> Little fat one. Look at that. Does he love that mouse or what? Yeah, baby. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Yep. We're getting nice towards the evening, too. Good right sign. Beside. Good sign. <laughs> right oh, beside your plug. Man. Good. Okay. That's why we believe in that little mouse, man. Now, normally you would go to a tree like that and jig around. And, like, oh, that. like You got one? Like that, yep. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, it's a pike, a little snake. A little snake. Oh, thank God he got off. Now, I wonder if there's another bass in there. Hit in there. That was off the rock. I didn't cast it in the tree. No. I just cast it in the rock. Got one. <laughs> uh, like, the on the black. Is on. on the black mouse this time, buddy. The mouse bite is on. Nice fish. Nice fish. <laughs> you gotta love it. Another large mouth. Another little large mouth. Now, I wonder how many are out there. Well, he's off that tree, too. So You know what? You never know. Easy, buddy. Look at that. It's not just the white mouse that <laughs> no, works. No, no, it's not That's white a good thing. Now, he ate that good two inch. He's got two trebles yeah. in there. He ate that real nice. Wow. Smaller fish. If we can get on some bigger if ones now. We can now. get some big fish like that, man. Oh, They're hitting man, it that, nice too. That right? is the best. That's the deal right there. There. Now, it's two quick Look fish it. off that he's tree. He's pooping out of food in, so he's yeah. obviously full and he's still eating the mouse. That's awesome. Little guy, but you know what? We'll take him. And so color Easter. now, color didn't, make a, <laughs> color didn't make a whole lot of difference, those guys. We've got a white one. Yep. Got one on white and one on black. Good. Back to back, off the same tree. How cool is that? I like that. How cool is that? That's fun. And you're trying for a turd, aren't you? Well. You know, why not? <laughs> you know. <sighs> oh, how'd that sound? Oh. That's good. That's a good sign. Yeah. I like you it. Somebody just barely sucked that into. Just yeah. barely yeah. touched it. Didn't make any noise at all. 
Easy, buddy. Easy. He wants to go so bad. As we sit at the top of the show, we're going to be putting our furry little friend here in front of as many French River bass as we possibly can. I sure hope he's bilingual. However, as with most topwater fishing situations, you really need a backup bait as well. Oh, I guess you in do. The wee store. <laughs> <laughs> little wee guy again. Off the tree? Yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. You couldn't throw topwater in there. No. Too thick, unless you threw a frog or something in there. Come on, buddy. That's a boy. They're fat. Even the small fish are real fat. Pooh just fell out of his mouth. Bye-bye, little guy. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> that sounded awesome. He's pulling my string, Petey. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm just hanging on a sinkhole. Whoa! <laughs> That's what we wanted all day. Good job, buddy. All day, man. He's jumping enough to be a small Exactly. Mom. Let's have a look at you, Bubba. Get him in, buddy. Come on. He is a small eight. <laughs> How's that for a little bonus? Hey? Good fish. Wow, man. He took that big uh, Yamamoto grub. Uh, nice. Or, or, uh, swim sinkle. Swim sinkle. To get to Chaudier Lodge, we first took Highway 400 north from Toronto. We then took Highway 69 north to Highway 64. We headed east on 64 to Dokis Reserve Road and then proceeded on to Dokis Marina. From there, it's a short boat ride to the lodge. To survive the outdoors, you first have to prepare yourself for the onslaught of biting insects that can cause itchy bumps, rashes, and even deadly diseases. What separates good bugs from bad bugs? Take the green lacewing, for instance. It's a delicate insect with a bright green to greenish brown body and translucent wings with iridescent green veins. They are beautiful but voracious predators attacking most garden pests like aphids, caterpillars, and other insect larvae. In many countries, millions of lacewings are reared for sale as biological control agents for pests like insects and mites. That's a good bug. Mosquitoes, on the other hand, have mouth parts which are adapted for piercing the skin of plants and animals. The female needs to obtain nutrients for a blood meal before she can produce eggs. They often feed on humans and are therefore vectors for a number of infectious diseases affecting over 700 million people per year and killing at least 2 million. Luckily, bites can be prevented by wearing a repellent that contains DEET, like Moscow, repulsive since 1951. One of our favorite topwater backup baits is a soft stick bait like a Senko. If a bass misses the topwater, a slow dropping stick bait will often catch that fish. But it's also a great bait to use when a topwater simply is not happening. Yeah, this should do his own fishing shots. <laughs> That's a good looking fish, buddy. Now that fish was underneath you about right, three just, or four times. I just threw right over so top he of just that. now that one was not gonna come up for Destin, a topwater. Yeah, Destin is too not uh, a chance. And that tells you something, right? That guy. He's negative, and I'm sure some other fish in there. Oh, that's a chunky little guy. That is a real chunky little guy. Good looking fish. I don't know where. Now, now, I just can't get it's over the fact that, that, that you went over top of him yeah. three times. Yeah. Well, there's a case where he would bite. We just had to give him the right. That's right. Well, he bit good, good, right through the cheek, eh? God, right through that cheekbone. Yeah, them are tough ones. There the players, so you got it. There we go. <laughs> nice. Would have been nice to see about your top water, though. Let's be honest about it. Yeah, hey, yeah, uh, for sure. That's, but that's right. you know, that's a the fish way you top water fish, man. It's the way you top water fish, right? If you don't yep. get them up top, you... yeah, it just goes to show you, like you were saying. I mean, if 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 they, you know, we would like to force feed them all top water baits today. Let's be perfectly honest. About Every this, day, right? not just today. Every day. You know, it's the most fun bass. You, you know, it's a reaction do. strike. We see the fish hitting. Your you, 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 your heart stops. The adrenaline oh, yeah. pumps. But in a case like that, that fish was obviously not it's good right. at bite. Re the reality surface. is, they're and not going to. Really, you wonder why. I mean, he's feeding. He yeah. obviously was was feeding enough to go on the Yamamoto mm -hmm. swimming worm, right? Yeah. Yeah. But but just not enough to come up off the bottom and hit that top one. <laughs> Who knows? That's why they're fish, right? We will we'll never, never figure, figure out. them out. Exactly. Exactly.
I love it. I just dropped it. I just let it drop. He missed you completely the first time, eh? Did he? Because I just heard the swoosh. And no, I let, I let he, he came out of the water after it for some <laughs> bizarre reason. Very cool. Man, they are a healthy looking fish up here. Look at oh. how fat that fish is. That is pretty. Nice. Look at it. Short little chunker. Yeah. That is pretty. You are a beautiful fish. Mm. Aggressive. Not too good at hitting. I've come back twice, but that's okay. <laughs> See you, bud. Oh, yeah. Go back into your little weed bed. Now, can you imagine coming through this area back in the good old days when, oh, uh, when uh, the uh, explorers were coming through? Yeah. Coming down that whole river system. Yep. And seeing this stuff for the first time, I mean, how exciting would that well, be? I wonder what, what it looked like back then, like oh. a couple hundred years ago. What it would, you know, what the difference would be? Would they have large mold bass, for instance? That's a great and, question. And I, there's some documentation that uh, that I ran into leads me to believe that that they did use the fish throughout their journeys, you know, across the top of Nipsing into Georgia Bay. Right. They used fish for sustenance. I mean, they fish freshwater fish. Absolutely. And I, I got to believe. I mean. Of course, there's, there's huge muskie out here, and they would make a great meal back then. Well, the bass yeah. would, for sure. Yeah, smallies you know? if they had them. So yeah. I got to think that they probably did uh, encounter them. Mm -hmm. I don't know how far back. We should look into that. See how far back they really Are you going to do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got him. You got him. Oh, Whoa. yeah. <laughs> Oh, what a great jump. What a great jump that was. That might be the best all-time jump I've ever seen. Oh, wow, it was like slow motion. Oh, that was uh, spectacular. Awesome. Here, I'll get the motor. You, you got go it? ahead with the fish. Whoa. That was awesome. What a great jump. Boy, he wanted that mouse bad. He wanted it real bad. Look at that again, Pete. Perfect. Right oh, down. Oh, boy. <laughs> Look at this ball of bait behind you. Look at this. He just came off with it. All yeah, that little bait. Yeah. That looks like baby bass, maybe. It could be. Oh, man, did he ever smack that dice. Good that show. Was great. That, that jump was classic. Oh, that cleared the water by three feet. Yeah, and, and a little bit of a somersault flippy it's in there. Back one and a half, Sl I think. Slow motion back flip. Oh, man, that's nice. They just love that mouse. Fantastic. And that's... that's Four o'clock. We're not even into the evening We're not hour into yet. Tribe time, man. So the sun is still high. Nice. Right in the V. Was he? Yeah. Yeah. Go it. Right there. Right there. Same thing. <laughs> Same size. My drag's <laughs> loose too. Those fish were like belly to belly. This is a little wee guy. How oh, cool is that? I forgot to that? take my drag on that. How cool is that? Must be a whole school of them in there. Giant. At Fishing Canada, when we're on the road producing and shooting your favorite fishing show, we need a truck with lots of torque and power, especially when we're towing our boat. Whether you're pulling a 20-foot fishing boat up a steep ramp or a challenging lakeside launch, you need the power and torque of a Hemi. When you get behind the wheel of your truck, you need to know that power and performance is something that you can count on. This fire-breathing power plant boasts up to 9,800 pounds of towing capacity. But all that power won't go to waste. When the conditions are right, the 20 mile per gallon engine becomes a fuel-sipping four-cylinder. The 5.7 liter Hemi engine with fuel saver technology isn't just strong, it's also remarkably efficient. At Fisher Canada, we need a truck with lots of torque, horsepower, and fuel economy. That's why this Ram is perfect. You know, things have really changed in the past few years. With the American and Canadian dollar becoming very close in value, Americans have slowed down their travel to our beautiful country, missing out on the opportunity to enjoy our world-class natural resources. Lucky for us, Canadians are now taking advantage of traveling to our nation's fishing and hunting lodges and returning year after year. It almost used to be folklore or a dream to travel to a fishing lodge and catch your favorite species one after another, but now it's become a reality. So to make sure you get to our premier lodges and resorts, Switch up to new Castrol Edge Synthetic to get the maximum performance out of your tow vehicle. New Edge is an ultra premium synthetic oil that is designed for drivers who use their vehicles especially in extreme conditions like hot summer weather, trailering or hauling, or carrying a lot of friends and gear. 
If you want to experience the very best fishing our country has to offer, switch to new Castrol Edge, Castrol's strongest and best oil ever. The water up here in the French is more than ideal for bass fishing. Before we arrived here, I pictured high bluff walls, deep trenches and channels, and pretty much anything that wasn't bassy looking. Man, was I wrong. Those types of structures do exist on the French, but the back bays and shallow channels give this area that classic bassy look. Got one, Ants? Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. He's in the reeds. <laughs> and look how fat he is. Yeah, that's a fat, Get the fat largemouth. Oh, hold on. <laughs> there, is, there he is. On the outside edge, eh? Yeah. Okay. He's a chunker. Yes, he is. Nice fish. Wow, they're all fat here, aren't they? <laughs> Look at that. Tell That's me he's not great. feeding. Well, obviously, we have found uh, the little part of the reeds that has some fish. If you look down in the reeds, you're going to see the cabbage weed, the light cabbage in there. Yeah. That type of weed in there. The other stuff That's, didn't have it. It was bare. There was nothing there except for the reeds. This has now got a lot of weed in, in between, and I think that's a huge key, so. However, having yeah. said that, I don't know if a top Going water by. bite's gonna happen in here, buddy. Well, the wind is up a little too much yeah. too, right? If it yeah. calms down later this evening, we yeah. can probably get a nice one going on here. Yeah. Nice. Good stuff, man. Okay. We'll probably establish something now anyway. Yeah, for sure. What we've got here is about I'm going to say a mile worth of reed bank, all good looking pencil reed from the outside. And we worked probably a quarter mile of it already without yep. even seeing any form of life at all. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, this point got some cabbage mixed in with it, just something a little different and boom, boom, boom. Action, action, action. As the day progressed, Dan and I decided to hit Nipissing with our furry little rodents in hope of some shallow smallies cruising on the rocks. That shows the diversity of this fishery. On that edge, buddy. Got one. I just got. Hey. You got railed? No, I just. I was just gonna say. I just put it on that edge. You got one off yeah. off the edge. Yeah, off Good the one? edge. Yeah, uh, it feels on all right. On the mouse, eh? Yeah, it feels all right. Oh, boy, he's bet. Oh, nice fish. Nice fish, buddy. Nice fish. You got him hooked. Uh, yeah, he's digging too. I didn't even hear him. He Did, just what, slurped. He just slurped it. He just slurped it. Yeah. Wow. That fish knew what he wanted. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> stay down. Yeah, stay down. Oh, he's well. Come on, baby. Yes. Good job. <laughs> nice. Oh, look at that, eh? Boy, when they, want, when they want that thing, eh? <laughs> look at that. Oh, yeah. Not bad. <laughs> not, not as big as I thought he was. The lake. Hill. Wow. Your head up on top. Look at that. The way Very he ate cool. The, he ate the Got heck of that. Yeah. So, oh, there it goes. So one nice thing about the, these things, though, I mean, you, I don't, I don't, Brown rat. You, you still lose them on these, but I'll tell you what, your chances are pretty darn good that there's going to be at oh, least yeah. one hook in that fish. Yeah, look at him. Bye-bye. See ya. Little drowned rat, brother. Yeah, tail kind of crooked, but that's okay. <laughs> it's a fun little bait. Cool. Now that's a, we moved out into the lake, too. So, you, I mean, between the French River which, uh, how many miles of, oh, of fishable God. bass? I mean, I, the river itself, I don't know how many miles long it is, but I think probably 75% of it is good fishable From Shadier water. Lodge to Lake Nipissing is unbelievably good fishing water for largemouth, smallmouth, muskie, and walleye. If you go the other way, yeah. and, or hook around and then go the other way back in Marsh Bay and that, yeah. largemouth and smallmouth galore, and then you gotta come out to the lake. And, and then this whole lake when it gets, and this is flat, this is nipping. it can get rough, but look at today, it's perfect. That's why we came out. There is so much water here, it's scary. Now the, the, the thought about this though, that kind of, you know, makes it really special, certainly in my mind, is that uh, we're doing it in a nice 20 foot Prince craft, but can you imagine back in the uh, 16 and 1700s, folks coming across here in, in uh, basically yeah. 20 foot freighter canoes yep. with a couple of thousand pounds worth of freight in it. <laughs> There's one beat. Got it? What? Well, he just slurped it down. I'm gonna read it. Small A, it might be oh. big. No, he doesn't feel like much. No? No, he just sucked it down. He didn't really smack it like, like you would expect him to. Slurped it in? Just a little slurpy. I thought it was hung on the edge of the, see that little yep. patch of weeds is coming out the weeds plant? Weeds off the rock. Yeah. No wonder you caught him, eh? You didn't tell me about that spot, <laughs> did you? <laughs> eh? 
There he is, buddy. Oh, oh yeah, there he is. There he is, man. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Bring him over here. I'll let him for you. Thank you. I don't want to touch Thank them you. troubles. He's got the mouse just on the outside of his cheek. He didn't eat it this time. Nice. There you Good go. Good stuff. Thank you. Look at that. He just got it from the, with, So you know what happened there, right? Because I, I, I'm telling you, I thought it was the edge of that weed that, that actually caught the treble right? and pulled it down. Right. He must have just gone and given it a little bit of a swipe to try maybe to injure it and caught it. Look at this. Just got it on the uh, on the edge there. Look at that. Yeah. Cool. Normally they've been, they've been sucking the whole thing down. That was the weirdest hit I've ever had. <laughs> I almost, you know what? I got a feeling he didn't even really hit it. Like to eat it? Right. I think he just swirled it. I think they do that yeah. a lot. I think he just swirled at that thing. Do that. That's chunky. cool. Nice oh, chunky, yeah. man. It's dark again. Gorgeous around here. On the old white. I love it. Yep. Black and white. Yeah, baby. We're on the mouse pattern, buddy. Well, as you can see, my little mouse obsession is as strong as ever. And Pete seems to be getting hooked as well. By using a natural looking bait in the proper situations, topwater fishing is a viable presentation throughout most of the bass season and can often produce during all hours of the day. Topwater bassin, it gets no better. Whoa! Oh, and by the way, keep an eye out for my furry little Fred here, coming soon to a store near you. What impact does your boat have on the global environment? Did you know that aluminum leaves a smaller echo footprint than fiberglass? So, what happens to that fiberglass beauty when it bites the dust? Where's it go? Most fiberglass boats eventually end up as landfill in one way or another. Aluminum is more efficient, durable, and it's 100% recyclable, creating a much greener planet. The total recycled content of domestically produced flat rolled aluminum for the building and construction market is approximately 85%. Next time you crush a can or make a tuna sandwich, know that you're helping to build a better boat. The folks at Princecraft can help you make the best of your day on the water without sacrificing comfort, safety, and of course, fishability. Today's hotspot is a great little topwater cove tucked into the far backwater bass reaches of the French River. The waypoint on your screen will get you right there. Along with topwater baits, Senkos, spinner baits, shallow running cranks, and floating minnow baits will all catch both largemouth and smallmouth. Once you finish hitting these areas, start to work similar spots throughout the channel. And for a non-fishing specific tip, remember to bring your muskal. It'll save your day. For more waypoints like this one, go to fishincanada.com. Fish in Canada, brought to you in part by Coleman, the outdoor company. Muskal, repulsive since 1951. Prince Craft Boats, the more you know, the better we look. Mercury Outboards, number one on the water. And Sail, the outdoor superstore.